different uh, techniques for scheduling according to different objectives. We started on that last week and we will continue now today. Um, we talk about the flow chop, which is the well, problem where n jobs are processed through m machine, a certain number of machines, in the same sequence. And the problem we are focusing on in, uh, in this course is the so-called job shop problem. Sequencing of jobs through machines uh, may be, they might be different and there might also be multiple operations on some machines. But we are focusing on the problem where you have only one machine and a certain number of jobs. If you continue on master studies, then you will show, uh, you will learn other techniques which is used in more uh, well, complex situations. But here we are focusing on the, uh, the well, uh, classical techniques for scheduling jobs through one machine or workstation. Uh, well, important to know, we also talk about parallel processing versus sequential processing. And when we have only one machine, of course, we have only sequential processing. But if you have several machines, you can process in, in parallel and then it might... Well, of course, you, you have more resources. You, you are able to, uh, to finish all jobs uh, earlier, but you will also have a more complex pro problem about uh, uh, how to, to pro which machines to use for processing the different jobs. Uh, one very uh, common uh, measure is what we call the flow time. And the flow time is defined to be the time from you start one sequence of jobs until that particular job is finished. Uh, this is very often used to compare the different techniques, uh, uh, the different uh, sequences formed by the different techniques. We also talk about the make span. Make span is the flow time of the job completed last. And uh, when you have only one machine, the make span will always be the same. In this example, like we, we started on, on last week, the make span will be the sum of all the process time for all the jobs, which is in this case 74. Independent of sequence, if you have only one machine to process uh, all these times, the last job will be finished by day 74. Uh, we talk about tardiness. Tardiness is defined to be the positive difference between the completion time and the due date, which means if you have a delay, the tardiness describes the number of days or eventually other uh, time uh, unit uh, of delay. But if the job is finished before the due date, the tardiness is defined to be zero. Uh, lateness will also describe the difference between the completion time and the due date. But here, for lateness, this measure can also be negative. So if a job is finished before the due date, it might have a lateness of minus two, but the tardiness will still be zero. Uh, we will focus mostly on tardiness as the measure. If a job is finished before the due date, it's okay, but uh, the, the most common measure to, to uh, use to compare different sequences is uh, the tardiness. Either the average tardiness or the maximum tardiness or the number of tardy jobs, the number of delayed jobs. Uh, we have different sequencing rules. We started first, uh, well, started last week looking at the FCFS, first come, first served. Jobs are processed in the order that they come to the job. And this is well, considered as a very fair strategy. First in, first out. First come, first served. But it's not always the most effective. You have other strategies, which we will look on in a short while, the SPT sorting according to the shortest processing time, schedule the shortest jobs first. We have the EDD, earliest due date. Jobs are sequenced according to the due dates, the job that should be finished earliest according to the, uh, well, the, what, what is uh, defined for that job, should be scheduled first and so on. And 
we also here in this case talk about a critical ratio which is some kind of well, uh, measure well uh, use both the SPT and the EDD techniques and find the critical ratio between the processing time and the remaining time until the due date and then schedule the jobs according to the largest critical uh, ratio <coughs> And also, <coughs> we have some results here. The rule that minimizes the mean flow time of all jobs is the SPT. Finish the shortest jobs first, and then wait with the longest jobs to the end of the sequence. Uh, we talk about well, different criteria, which are in practice equivalent, means the same. The mean flow time, the mean waiting time, and the mean lateness will actually mean exactly the same here. And we will also, after we have seen um, the techniques we showed in, in the previous, uh, uh, previous sheet here, we will look at what we call the Morse algorithm, which minimizes the numbers of tardy jobs. And at last, we will look at Lawler's algorithm, which minimizes the maximum flow time subject to precedence constraints. Sometimes you need to finish one job before another job, uh, and this is called the precedence constraints, and then you can use this Lawler's algorithm to find a feasible solution, a feasible schedule, but still with the minimum, maximum flow time subject to this precedence. Okay, I will now show examples, uh, focus at least first on, on this example from the textbook. We have five jobs. Each of them have a given process time, and a given due date. And if we well, look, uh, use this as, as uh, the use the day as the time measure. Uh, job one will use 11 days and should be finished by 61 days. Job two use 29 days, be finished by 45 days. Job three use 31 days and should be finished by 31 days. This means that the only way to get this job finished in time is to place it first in the schedule. And so on. Job four and five, small jobs with a rather long uh, time uh, for, for the, the due date. Uh, so we looked at the FCFS strategy, which is the sequence one, two, three, four, and five. And then we created a new column, which is the completion time or the flow time. When is the job finished according to this sequence? And job one will take 11 days. Job two will then start and be finished 29 days later, which means day 40. Job three takes 31 days, finished by 71. Job four will take only one day, finished by 72. And job five will take two days, finished by 74. As we can see, it's equal to the make span. Independent of sequence, the last job will be finished by day 74. And since day 74, is larger than any of the due days, it's not possible to get a feasible sequence where all jobs are finished within the due date. So here, some jobs needs to be delayed, independent of what sequence we, we use. Well, so we want to find a sequence according to different objectives, which can be used, which will minimize the, op, uh, the, well, the objective which we, we consider to be the most important. So also, let's now look at the tardiness for this sequence. Job one finished by day 11 should be finished by day 61. So this is not delayed. If you talk about lateness, we can see that the lateness will be minus 50. But the tardiness is zero. It is finished within time. It is not delayed. Job number two finished by day 40, due date of 45 also within time. Job three, finished by 71, should be finished by 31, 
40 days left. Job number four, finished 72, should be finished 33, 39 days left. And job number five, finished 74, should be finished 32, 42 days left. So, we can also find the sum of each of these columns and then the sum of the flow time, sum of all these numbers will be 268. And the sum of this column, the sum of the tardiness, will be 121. And now we talk about the different measures which can be used. So we talk about the mean flow time. Mean flow time. 268 divided by the number of jobs, which is 5. 53.6. We talk about the average tardiness. 121 divided by the number of jobs. Will be 24.2. We also talk about the number of tardy jobs, which also is a typical measure for these different sequences. In this case, three jobs are delayed, three jobs are tardy. And we can also talk about the maximum tardiness. the maximum value in this column, and this is 42. The job which has the longest delay is 42 days delayed. So this is now the FCFS, the first come first serve strategy, quite easy to schedule, find the flow time for each of the jobs when they are finished according to the schedule, check which of them are tardy and how tardy, how delayed they are, and then find the typical measures for these jobs here. Flow time, mean flow time, average tardiness, number of tardy jobs, and the maximum tardiness. Okay, let's now rather look at another strategy. Let's now look at the SPT, shortest processing time. job with the shortest processing time are scheduled first. Which means that even if job number one was registered fir first, we will wait with that job because we have a few small jobs. Uh, we have the SPT strategy. Which means we should sort the job according to the processing time. This one should be first. Only one day, job number four. And flow time of one. It takes only one day to finish. And then the second smallest job is job number five, which will only take two days. Finished by day three. Job number one is the next. 11 days, finished by day 14. Then job number two, 29 days, finished by 43. And at last, the longest job, job number three, 31 days, finished by 74. Now we have another sequence. And we will have a sum of the flow time here, which is 135. Much smaller value than we saw with the previous the FCFS strategy. And that's of course because the values here are much smaller. The smallest jobs are finished. 
finish the f small job jobs first, get them out of the system, and then wait with the long jobs to the end of the sequence. And let's now look at the tardiness. Compare this value to this value. Job 4, job 5, uh, job 1, job 2, finished 43 compared to 45. So all the four first jobs are within time, but this job is very delayed. It is finished by day 74, it should be finished by day 31, it is 43 days late. And then, of course, the sum of this column will also be 43. <coughs> so let's now look at the measures for this sequence found by using the SPT strategy, sorting the jobs according to the process time. Sorry, Question? This one? This is job number two. You have to look at this. Job number four is here, should be finished by 33, is finished by day. So you need to look, at the, you cannot follow the lines here, you need to look at the jobs here. So um, then here, the four first, uh, well, job four, five, one, and two are within time, according to the due dates here, but job number three, should be finished by 31, is finished by 74, so this is delayed. Uh, flow time, 135 divided by 5, get an average or mean of 27. Tardiness, total of 43, this is only for one job, but still the total is 43, divided by 5, 8.6. Number of tardy jobs is only one, and the maximum tardiness is here 43. So this is probably considered better in all uh, criteria uh, than the FCFS strategy, other than the maximum tardiness, which here is 43 compared to 42. And job number three is very much delayed. You have one customer, which is well, probably not very satisfied, but you have four customers which, which are very happy because they have their job finished on time. <coughs> um, the SPT strategy is optimal if minimizing the flow time is the main objective. It is the main objective. You should finish the jobs as soon as possible, and then you have to wait with the longest job to the end. You will have a few jobs which is very delayed but you have most jobs which is finished within time and out of the system as soon as possible. So let's now look at the next strategy mentioned uh, here, which is the EDD. Should also be pretty easy here. Earliest due date, sort the jobs according to this column instead of this column. Okay, look at the due date, then we can see that the earliest due date is this one, 31. Smallest value in this column. This means job number three should be finished, uh, should be sequenced uh, at first, scheduled at first. And this will take 31 days of flow time. And then the next number is 32, which is for job number five. 32. It takes two days, finished by job, uh, by day 33, 31 plus two. Then job number four will be next, take only one day, finished by 34. And then the next number will be this one, 45, job number two, 
and this will take 29 uh, days, will be 63. And at last, the job with the highest due date, 61, which is job number one, and will be, will be finished by 74. The sum of these numbers will be 235. Tardiness, first job, finished exactly on time, 31. Second job, well, job number five, finished by 33, but should be finished on 32, one day left. Job number four, 34 co uh, compared to 33, also one day tardy or one day delayed. Job number 2, 63 compared to 45, which is 18. And job number 1, 74 compared to 61, 13 days left. Which makes a sum of this column, 1 plus 1 plus 18 plus 13, is 30, uh, 33. And also, let's now look at the measures for this strategy here. 235 divided by 5 is mean time of 47. Average tardiness, 33 divided by 5, 6.6. .6. Number of tardy jobs, here we have actually four jobs, which is delayed. Only the first job is finished in time. But what is special for this strategy is that it will minimize this measure, minimize the maximum tardiness, minimum, minimize the maximum delay. This one is 18 in this case. And we remember we had 42 and 43 as the maximum tardiness for the previous strategies, the SPT strategy and the first come first serve strategy. So here we have a sequence with uh, four tardy jobs, but with the tardiness as small as possible. This can be proven mathematically so that this sequence is the sequence that will give us the minimum value on this measure, the maximum tardiness. It is not possible to find a sequence where one job is not less, uh, well, w one job, I job is less than 18 days uh, delayed. So the earliest due date is the strategy that will minimize the maximum tardiness objective. <coughs> so now we have quite quickly gone through, well, probably the two simplest strategies or sequencing rules. Well, first come, first serve. It's not optimal for, for any objective, but it will be considered fair for most of the, of the customer, if that is the main objective. Shortest processing time will sort the jobs according to the processing time, finish the shortest jobs first, get them out of the system, which means that the flow time or the total or the me, uh, mean or average flow time will be as small as possible, if this is the main objective, then the, the SPT strategy should be used. And the earliest due date, sort jobs according to the values in this column, the due date, and then you might experience that you have several jobs which is delayed, but the delayed is as small as possible. The maximum tardiness, it's not possible to get a lower number on the maximum tardiness objective than 18 in our example here. Okay, then let's look at the next sequencing rule, the critical ratio, this one, which is to compute the ratio of the processing time of the job and the remaining time until the due date and schedule the job with the largest critical ratio uh, next. This is not optimal for any objective, but it's considered to be a well, some, some kind of uh, um, mid-between or uh, compromise between the SPT rule and the EDD rule. If 
the objective are considered to be equally important. So let's now try to put up a sequence with the critical ratio strategy. And uh, then we have a formula which we should use. Find the critical ratio, the value, the CR value, which is defined to be the difference between the due date and the current time. We are now starting on time zero, which is considered to be the day for the start of the first job. and divided by the processing time. <coughs> okay. This is the formula and let's now, we, well, using this formula, we should select one job at a time. So here, find the critical ratio for job number one when the current time is equal to zero. Okay, the critical ratio when the time is equal to zero for job number one. The due date, 61. Process time, 11. And current, date is, current time is zero. 61 divided by 11 should be 5.55. Um, okay, uh, yeah, there are different ways. I'm now doing it the opposite way as is described here because this sentence, schedule the job with the largest CR value next, are doing it the opposite way. So I am actually now selecting the job with the smallest CR value. The, well, the difference would be just to change the nominator and the denominator. Anyway, important to understand the, well, the difference and, and try to understand the principles here. Because either you are sorting from the highest to the lowest or, or the opposite direction. But find the critical ratio. Critical ratio here, due date, 61 minus current time, which is zero, divided by the processing time, and 5.55 for job number one. 45 minus zero divided by 29 will give us a value of 1.55. 31 divided by 31 is, of course, one. 33 divided by one is 33. And 32 divided by 2 should be 16. So here, the critical ratio, the value, the, high, uh, the lowest value, which is when you use this direction here, due date divided by processing time, is 1, this one. Which means job number 3 should be scheduled first. Job number three, flow time of 31, and no tardiness. This is finished on time. And then we should continue. We know job number one takes 31 days. Job number three, sorry. Job number three takes 31 days. That means when this is finished, the time is 31. And now, due date minus 31 divided by process time will be the value of the CR, the critical ratio. We have found the first job in the sequence and now we should decide about the second job. So let's now look at job number one. It still has a due date of 61 minus 31, which is 30, and divided by 11, which is the processing time. 30 divided by 11 is 2.73. 
Job number two, 45 minus 31 divided by the processing time of 29 will give us a value of 0 0.48. Job number three is already positioned, so we just skip that one. Job number four, 33. Um, 33, due date, minus 31, and divided by the processing time of 1. So 33 minus 31 is 2, divided by 1 should still be 2. And job number 5, 32 uh, minus 31, divided by 2 should be 0 0.5. And again, look at the critical ratio choose the lowest value, which in this case is 0 0.48. That means job number two should be next in sequence. Job number two takes 29 days, finished by day 60, but it should be finished by day 45, so this is 15 days delayed. And we can also already here see that this job is going to be delayed because this value is lower <coughs> than 1. If you get a critical ratio lower than 1, you know that this job is going to be delayed when it starts uh, or when it, uh, when it finished. But anyway, use this rule, choose the job with the lowest critical ratio and then continue. So now we have a T value of 60. We have found the position for the two first job in the sequence. And we have come to day number 60. And let's now look at uh, processing time for uh, job number uh, one. And then the due date is 61 minus 60, then it's 1 divided by the processing time, is 1 divided by 11, will give us 0 0.09. Job 2 and job 3 is also already uh, scheduled. Job number 4 will now have a due date of 33 and a t value of 60 divided by one day, which means that you have a negative value here, minus 27. And similar for job number five, due date 32 minus the current time of 60 divided by two will give us a negative value of 14, minus 14. And the negative value will mean that these jobs are already delayed. A uh, value for the critical ratio between 0 and 1 will say that you start on time, but you will finish late. A negative value means that you are already late when you are starting the job. But according to, well, using the rules for the critical ratio, we should now choose the negative jobs. And then to sort between the negative jobs, uh, we can use the SPT strategy. These jobs are already delayed. Okay, let's finish them as soon as possible. So, choose the SPT strategy, which here means that job number four will be next and job number five will be next online. Job number four, take one day, 61, should be finished by 33, means uh, 28, days left, uh, delayed. Job number 5, 63, should be finished by 32, which means 31 days left. And then we are uh, left with one single job, and we don't need to put up this next table, because the only option here is the 
to position job number one at the end of the sequence. Job number one take 11 days, 74, and 74 compared to 61 is 13 days left. We can also now find the values here. The sum of the flow time for all the jobs will be 289. The sum of the tardiness for all the jobs will be 87. And if we now compare this sequence with all these measures we have uh, uh, used for the other sequences, we find that uh, the mean flow time, 289 divided by 5, is 57.8. The average tardiness will now be 87 divided by 5, 17.4. Number of tardy jobs is 4. The maximum tardiness is here, 31 for job number 5. And this strategy or this sequence is not optimal for any objective, but it tries to balance between the earliest due date and the shortest processing time strategy. And you cannot say that any of the strategies is the best strategy. This will be different in different situations. Sometimes it's okay to plan with a large delay on a few jobs. Uh, other times you should rather try to minimize the maximum delay, so all jobs uh, or a, a, well, a large number of jobs might be delayed, but the delay is as small as possible. And sometimes you will try to find a balance and use this critical ratio method, which is not optimal, but it's better than shortest processing time for some objectives and better than earliest due dates from, from other objectives. Okay, I think that's enough for today. And then we have uh, few things left for the last lecture next week. Morse algorithm is another algorithm to be used when this is the major objective. Try to minimize the number of tardy jobs. And then we also have the Lawler's algorithm, which can be used when you have precedence. Some jobs needs to be finished before the other jobs. But that remains for next lecture in one week. And then we should also look at some exam problems, problems from last year.